Okay, have the transmission out of a 1989 Ford Mustang. This is a four speed transmission called an AOD, automatic overdrive. This is a 100% mechanical transmission. All right, there are the only wires going to this go to the neutral safety switch. Uh, of course, to start the car and park in neutral and for the reverse lights to work. All right, as you put the linkage in a certain position, it, it pushes on this button here. I'll give you a close up shot of this. So, what's going on with this? It uh, belongs to a friend of mine. I know the guy, and he called me up and he says, oh, You know, my transmission's not working right. I'm hearing a noise coming out of it. So, I says, Bring it down. Let's check it out. And uh, by the time he got here, it really wasn't moving that great. Noise is a clogged screen. So we shut it off for a few minutes and we're able to get it inside the shop. We dropped the pan on it and the pan was loaded with metal. There's still a bunch of metal in it. You know, most of the fluid got drained out, but I didn't want to clean the pan out so you guys could see. Um, more than likely, uh, I told him the converter is blown. We've got to pull this thing and we've got to do the overhaul. So of course we got the okay, so we're going to open this up and see what we find. All right, now I just wanted to go over a very common problem with this transmission. I'm going to give you a close-up shot of this too when I zoom in on the unit. But this here is where the kick-down cable or the throttle cable hooks up to. Okay, so it goes up to the throttle body, which is of course right on top of the engine. And there's a bushing that looks like this, it's a little smaller, that hooks up to the cable. All right, the cable snaps in in the center and then the bushing uh, snaps into a lever on the throttle body. All right, so what happens is the heat from the engine kind of makes this thing hard and brittle, and then the cable falls out, and then you don't have your throttle pressure, so you're not gonna have line rise. All right, so basically, as you step on the gas, you know, it's gonna call for more pressure, but with the cable being disconnected, you're not gonna get the pressure. So what's gonna happen if you don't catch it in time? First of all, you may notice it might be shifting earlier. Okay, and what's gonna happen if you don't catch it in time, you're gonna burn out either your overdrive band, more than, the common one is the overdrive band. So when it hits fourth gear, it runs away like it's a neutral and it does nothing. That's kind of like a classic sign. Uh, also very possible the direct clutch could get burned out, but the more common thing is, uh, is the overdrive band. Now first, second, third, and nothing in fourth. Uh, when the cars would come in like that, we'd look under the hood, look at the cable, and there it is hanging off. It's not even attached anymore. But at that point, it's too late. And what's funny is a couple people came in and they said, you know, the car's not shifted right. It seems like it's shifting early. And they noticed it because, of course, you, you know, really know your car when you drive it every day. And I would always ask them, how long is it working like this for? And he says, oh, it just started the other day. So a few people did catch it in time, and a few people did not catch it in time. Most of the people did not catch it in time. They would bring it in, it would be too late, because what I would do is I would show them the cable is off, we put a bushing in, drive it, still did the same thing. At that point, it's too late. Very common problem on these transmissions uh, that have the cable, the AOD, automatic overdrive. Then in 93, they started with the electronic one, AODE. Then came the 4R70W, then like the 4R75E, and I believe they're still going. Uh, I just finished a 2014E250 van. All right, so we're gonna tear this down and uh, see what we got. Uh, I'm a little, little limited on time, so maybe we could just chunk this down and then tomorrow morning uh, we can open up the drums and, and, uh, and look at the clutches and stuff like that. So let me get a little closer because I wanna give you a close-up shot of this stuff and then we're gonna go ahead and start uh, tearing this trans down. Okay, all right, so here is a close-up shot of the neutral switch. All right, here's, I got this in my hand still. Here's the bushing again. Uh, that you gotta look at the top. You know, you have just kind of followed the cable up. You may have to move like the top of the air box or something like that, I don't really remember. But it's pretty accessible, it's, it's right there. Just follow the cable up and, and you'll, you'll see it. And here is the lever. I'm gonna, I took the nut off here, and take this off. Okay, um, maybe we'll zip this tail off here. See if we can just chunk this thing down real quick. 
we got a couple of studs here. It's usually the bracket for the shifter cable. I've been on one of these in a while. two bolts holding the pan and up. All right, extension housing, bushing looks good. Here is your governor. And this thing, of course, is, there's a valve that floats and I think it's jammed. All right, so let's get that snap ring. All right, I'm gonna get my bent wire for that one. And I'm gonna show you a little something on this, but Again, I'm limited for time today. And these are the teeth for the speedometer gear. So what we used to do is when we would keep these in stock, you know, 30 years ago, uh, we would count the teeth and mark it on the bell housing. This way we would pick the right one. If you didn't pick the right one, of course, your speedometer is, is going to be off. All right, so this is going to come out. This here, yeah, this thing's jammed pretty good. And there is a check ball that holds it in place so it doesn't spin. Now, even with the check ball, sometimes it's a little loose. Uh, I need a magnet. Sometimes it's a little loose, and uh, what I do is take a piece of uh, like a rubber for like a, a, a very skinny o ring, and I put it down on the bottom, put the ball in, and, and force the, uh, the governor on and it makes a nice tight fit. Also, I put the governor on last because there's a couple of feed holes here. You blow through these holes, you hear the uh, um, ship valves popping, mo moving back and forth. All right, so let's get that tail gasket off. You know, and I just want to uh, get these uh, pump bolts out, then we'll drop the pin. This goes into the direct drum, and then this side goes into the converter. Okay, also, another common issue on these, this is the filter, and a lot of times when people do the service, they sometimes might forget to put this little gasket on. That goes right here. All right, you forget that, and even though it's full of oil, like when you go around a turn, it's gonna fall out of speed. A while back, uh, I road checked the car. The guy didn't really say anything to me. Uh, he just said, I think there's something going on. Um, and he wanted an opinion. I think the last shop he was at, they told him he needed a transmission. So he brings it in. I drive it. I go around the corner. I feel the thing slip. And then I ask him, uh, I say to him, by chance, 
that you just have this transmission service. I don't know who this guy is, I don't know anything about the car, but I said, did you just have this transmission service? He said, as a matter of fact, I did. He says, how did you know that? I said, because they left a little gasket off that they were supposed to install when they changed over the filter, but it probably doesn't come in, maybe didn't come in the kit, maybe they didn't see it, I don't know. So it was this seal here, and there was no seal here. So I dropped the pan, took the filter down, put the gasket on for him, put it back up. I think I charged him like $60. And the uh, guy was very happy, being the fact that uh, somebody else wanted to sell him a unit, and the guy wrote me a very nice letter, which I framed. He sent all kinds of people to the shop. Uh, it was nice. Okay. We're gonna take this down off. They normally have bolts with shoulders on them, but maybe this does not have that. Because they normally have like a bolt that goes here and here for a shoulder bolt to keep the valve body aligned. But I'm not seeing that. like some kind of special plate here. And he said he wanted a shift kit installed, but not so sure he needs it. And this is normally would be where the one two accumulator goes and they eliminated that uh, on the later years. And you can tell it's a, a slot that's been eliminated from the valve body. You, would, you know, back in the day, we were able to tell uh, you know, what went with what just by looking at it. Okay, I'm gonna, there's a spring here that actually is out of place. Uh, maybe that thing never got put in place. All right, let me pull this valve body. See that's all uh, full of metal here. Put that drain. Uh, here is a spring that kind of uh, keeps tension on this. I guess maybe to return it. That's what that looks like. And that it hooks up here, and then you swing it around, and it hooks up to this little V notch. It lays right in this little V-notch right here, but it wasn't even hooked up. Okay. Take the park. Park pole shaft down. Spring for the parking pole. Same on the on all on all the units. Now we have um, overdrive band, reverse band, and accumulator piston. Get these out. Spring. Oh, scrap really. All right, this is going to be replaced with a molded piston. Two, three accumulator. All right, let's see if we can get these out. Servo piston. And the reverse. And this car is a little bolted rubber car, a little a little hard. So, I mean, I change those on every overhaul anyway. All right, this isn't too bad. And these are adjustable. This is a two groove piston. I actually have one of those in stock. No 
Okay, so that's that. Alright, let me get my uh, bar here, see if we can get this pump out and just chunk this down and then we can continue tomorrow and look at everything. Let's see how easy this is going to come out. Intermediate piston and return spring. All right, intermediate uh, clutches. So I've got some broken spots. I got a banner kit which I have already. All right, so these are thick. There's three of them, and on the later units, it takes the thinner and it takes four. All right, overdrive band. A little burnt here. This is the intermediate. Uh, this is a, actually a diode. And there's normally a snap ring. Let's see, this feels good. Uh, but it gets updated with a uh, spiral lock, uh, which is on here. But I have to take the spiral lock off and I'll just put another one on because I want to take that top load off. All right, the clutches. Um, forward frictions, uh, forward hub. center support snap ring. These things are common to break. All right, that's what that looks like. Uh, now we have the anti-rattle clip. Okay, that's what that looks like, anti-rattle clip. Sun gear and shaft pushing here is going to be changed. Okay. All right, so this thing is definitely wiped out. It's like this, this is a uh, another bushing. And the bushing that's spun out goes in here. All right, so this planetary is going to be changed, and the center support is going to be changed also. Even the pins feel like they're loose in here. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's, uh, you know, started up and get away the engine sounds. A little spray. And I think I have this stuff, you know, I had one of these units in stock. Uh, so I think I'm gonna have some of this stuff. Reverse band. Got some metal particles in there. I'm probably gonna change that. All right, we got like a space of snap ring. And the back section of the unit. Direct drum. Direct uh, clutch hub. Uh, looks like the burn. Okay, and there is the uh, bearing uh, that rides here in between the case and the apple chair. Now, uh, feeling for ring grooves in the back here, but uh, the uh, case bushing, you know, when that goes bad, it lays down on it, uh, but it feels okay, but the case bushing is going to be changed. Alright, so that 
So that's pretty much about it. Let me get rid of this. You got a bearing in here. Okay, so I'm going to get set up. Pretty much all we're going to do tomorrow. And there's also a bearing in between the two drums. This drum sits on here. And let me face this down a little bit. And there's a bearing. I need a bearing. Goes here, like that. Uh, really early ones that would take a washer. And you can tell because there would be grooves cut in so the washer cannot spin. It's all coming back. Okay. Uh, so I think that is uh, that is all for now because I'm short on time and I really got to go. So we're going to finish this up tomorrow morning. And we'll take a look at all this stuff. All right, so I'm going to stop there, and I will be back with you in the morning. Okay, back with you. Let's take a look here first. Reverse input drum. All right, clutches don't look bad, but they're getting changed anyway. I got a banner kit up there. Uh, all right, so let's just pop this out, check this dish spring. I use this little skinny screwdriver to get underneath the thick snap ring and twist it, pop it up. All right, there's that snap ring. All right, this looks good, no cracks in it. Then you have the little spacer here. Man, these things never come up that, that easy. There's the spacer ring, piston. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this um, lock off here, put a new one on because I just want to wash this up in the tank. Alright, bow and drum. This is the early style forward drum um, that you need. For instance, uh, these are some of the installation tools that have to be used uh, to put the pistons in because there's no chamfer. Fits right in here, and then you push the piston down. Um, on the later ones, like the 470Ws, the AODEs, they change the drums, so you really don't need uh, these installation tools anymore. These here are a little dark. These are um, just with any of these, uh, with the uh, any series of this transmission. Um, these clutches tend to flake. These are boards. Uh, the exities uh, for the forward are much better. I actually have um, the banner kit in the front, so I'll just show you what I need. Mean the difference. Uh, and the frictions. But anytime I build these uh, forward clutches, I always ask for the entities if they're available. Okay, so the direct drum. I got the washers and the bearing. Let me just grab that. Okay, that's these. It's on every one of them. All right, so this drum is not going to come out this way. So we've got to take this snap ring off. Okay, there's your two rings here. These are um, scarf cut rings on the later ones. Like the 470Ws, they are solid blue Teflon. Ring gear. And you have an open face ferry in the back here.
Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is probably a special, this is a special clutch bag. You never have seven. So these are thinner. I've seen this before. This, uh, the whole clutch pack uh, sold as a set. The steels and clutches are thinner, so you can get seven of them in there. And this actually is a later drum uh, that I'm not going to need the installation tool for. Just for the forward drum, I'll need the installation tool. Okay. All right, washer, which is selective. And I'll come right off. Now we're going to take the return spring out. There's a couple of tabs, just pry back on the tabs and lift. Piston. Get rid of the gasket. Get rid of the O-ring. Change the oil rings on the stator. Okay, this looks good. Pump gears. Alright, this looks nice. Right here is the governor, and I'm going to take these two screws out back here, which will split it apart from the weight. Here is the screen. Go on the screen. This really doesn't come in the kit, so I just got to be careful. That's going to go right there. And then this is your setup here. There's your valve, other valve, and then this little one goes inside. And then the whole setup, of course, is going to go. That's not too bad now, but still got to clean it all up. Okay, and then when you put it together, just make sure. I don't think I don't think you can put it wrong, but um, just note how it comes comes apart. Okay. Now let me just make some room here. I'll get the um, I'll get the valve body over here, and I'll just take a. Fast look at that. Uh, so just give me a couple of minutes here. Okay. Uh, I just want to show you something on this valve body. Some kind of a special plate, not the stock plate. Okay. 
right? So you got a couple of uh, springs and valves. This has a long, long neck on, and this one is short. So let me just take these out. Okay, check balls. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is uh, larger. This one is larger than all the others. That's five, six, and seven. Okay. There's the um, accumulator valve in here. This gear, uh, yeah, this one right here. All right, there's a spring in there that likes to break. I don't know how easy this is gonna come out. And here's the clip. Uh, I think this does have threads in it, but let's see. Being the fact that this is has been modified, as I don't even think there's a spring in here. All right, let me find something. Uh, I think that this, I believe, is threaded, but it doesn't fit. Okay, give me give me one second here. Okay, all right. So I've got it out. I put a little uh, self-tapping bolt in here, and it actually pulled right out. Now this thing's been modified. Uh, has that special plate and there's normally a spring in here sometimes there's a spring on both sides but at this point it looks like there's no springs in here and a lot of times the spring on this side is broken so that's something that you want to check and there's also an o-ring on this end cap on this end plug here that you want to change so i'm actually going to leave this thing out for now i'll just take the valve out so that's pretty common also for that to break. All right, let me just run and get, I don't think I have it here yet. Let me just run and get the bannocket. I just want to show you the different frictions. Um, give me one second again. Okay, so here is my uh, clutch kit uh, for the bannocket I just got. And these here are the, are the Borg Warner. And these here are, uh, I believe, the Exides. And these are actually for forwards. And these are for the reverse input, intermediate and direct. But these clutches for the forwards I like much better, uh, especially with the later units. In, in this family called the 4R70W, uh, high failure rate, uh, the clutches have, they flake off. And then what happens is the, when they flake off, you get too much clearance in the clutch pack, they come up too high. And then the piston uh, lip seal Looks if the piston tears on the way down when it's returning, when the clutch comes off. Uh, and I see that a lot, because I do those 4R70Ws. I do um, pretty much a few, I just finished one. I do a few of those every week. So, you know, if it's possible and you're, and you're ordering a, a banner kit, just um, um, say you want like the exity, uh, see if it's possible to specify the exity frictions. And some of them, you get the exit frictions on the lady units for the um, forward drum and the reverse input drum, but it's a pretty good clutch. It doesn't really flake like uh, these other ones do, because that's a main reason why we get a lot of these jobs in is because of the forward drum. And if you're working with uh, a 2004, 2005, just to let you know, I got the camera on here. Another common problem is this. You can see the crack in that drum, 2004, 2005. I just, I just finished an 04 
I just finished the 14, and now I'm doing this one. Let me see if I can actually find some of the clutches I can. Now, I'm not sure what I did with them. But uh, just point of information on frictions. All right, so again, 1989. Ford Mustang, regular AOD, fully mechanical transmission. Uh, clock screen looks like the, uh, to me, the converter uh, let go. Uh, metal throughout the whole unit. I gotta change a couple of those hard parts, the planetary, the uh, center support. And we're gonna uh, rebuild this. I'm gonna clean it up, strip it all down, put it in the machine, clean it up and get working on it, got a bunch of All stuff All right, so to I'm do doing here. another transmission in, in the AOD family. Uh, this is an 03, so this is actually a 4R70W. And this came in not really moving it forward that great. Once you race it up, it would jump into gear. And you saw the, you just saw the uh, cracked drum, which is a common problem. Now here is the other common problem. Look at the frictions, they flake off, and there's absolutely nothing left of them. So what happens, you know, they should look like this. So these flake off, there's nothing left of these frictions back in front. So that gives a lot of clearance in between the pressure plate and the snap ring. So the clutch will apply, but then it, as it returns, if you can see this here, it tears the seal. If you can see that, the seal is torn. So now the oil's just gonna bypass and if they're sitting there for a few minutes and racing it, racing it up, boom, it'll go into gear. So if you're gonna build these units, like I had said before, when I get these banner kits, that's why you want these exity frictions. You know, these I believe are the Borg Warners, but this happens a lot, it's very, very common. Okay, another thing that will make uh, the transmission, you know, when you when you hit the gas, drop out of gear, uh, and go back in gear to maybe act like a crack drum would be a stuck uh, solenoid red valve, which is located right next to the manual valve. So you want to make sure that is nice and free. All right, so one more time, every one of them is flaked down to nothing here. So again, you know, when you order these banner kits, you know, my recommendation is Exidy frictions, at least for the forwards. Uh, they're also in the reverse input drum, that really doesn't happen. Basically that drum is on in reverse, so it's, you know, it's not really used that much. But uh, for forward, I definitely go with the exities. All right, so I just wanted to share that with you as well. All right, so I want to give you a shot of the torque converter on this AOD trans here. You can see the piece. Right here. A lot of metal uh, in this unit due to this blown converter. So I just wanted to give you a shot of that one more time. That's the torque converter. Alright guys, thanks for watching.